Now let's check what does a question looks like. So we have given and sorted array A of size n. We need to delete all the duplicate elements present in my array and modify the array such that it contains only distinct elements. Which means whatever the final array we get, it should contains only distinct elements. The most important point to note here in this question is that is the this second point. So what does this says that we need to modify the array and return the size of modified array such that that size indicates the total number of distinct elements. So what does it mean is let's understand by sample input output. So this is the sample input we have given. So what we need to do is we need to modify the array and return the size of modified array such that the size is nothing but total number of distinct elements. So what we will do is so what will be our answer here is so you got one, two and four. And at the remaining three places, we can have any elements. But the point is, we got the three distinct elements. So we will return as a three. So I hope so you understood the meaning of the question. That is simply return the total number of distinct elements in my array. And the most important point is that distinct element should be present at the front of my array. Now, whenever this question comes in your interview, what will be the first brute force solution that you will give? So what we will do is we will be using the set in C++ and hash set in Java. So here I will have this set. You can call it hash set in Java or set in C++. So let me write it as a set. And what I will do is I will traverse each and every single element present in my array. And at the same time, while traversing, I will check whether that element is present in my set or not. If the given element is present in my set, I will simply ignore that element. But if the element is not present in my set, I will push that element in my set. So let's understand one by one. So what I will do is first I will start traversing from one. Now I will check is there one in my set? No, there is no any one present in my set. So I will simply put one in my set. Now again, I will go to the second one but my one is already present in my set. Therefore, I will simply ignore this one. Now I will come at two and there is no any two present in my set. So I'll simply put two in my set. Then again, I come across two, but the two is already present. So simply ignore it. Again, we have two, but the two is already present in my set. So simply ignore this. So we got four and there is no any four present in my set. So simply put four in my set. So again, I have four, but the point is my four already present in my set. So simply ignore it. Now, once we have traversed whole array, we can see that our set has given all the distinct element present in my array. So what we can do is we can simply return total number of elements present in my set. That is three. But before we return total number of elements present in my set, we need to make sure that all this element should be present at the front of my array. So what we need to do is we need to check and remove these elements and put in my array once again. There is one property of a set that everyone knows that it stores the element in increasing order, right? That from smaller to the bigger. So the first a one will be removed and will be placed at first position. Two will be removed. It will be placed at the second position and four will be removed and it will be placed at third position and remaining three places will be any number since we are returning three that is up to only these elements. So this was the brute force solution. Now what will be the time complexity for the brute force solution? We know that in order to insert one element inside the set, it takes big of log n time. And since we are traversing whole array, so it will take big of n log n element. So plus what we are doing is we are removing all the elements present in my set and again we are putting in the array. So say for example, my array does not contains any duplicate. So all the elements present will be in my set. So again, I need to remove all the elements present in my set and push into my array. So this will take big O of n. So what will your time complexity? So the time complexity will be big O of n log n plus big O of n. Now, is there any optimal solution for this? Yes, there is one optimal solution. Now let's check what will be the optimal solution for this question. So now let's check the optimal solution. So what I will do is I will be using the concept called as a two pointer. So with the help of this two pointer, we will be approaching this problem. So what I will do is I'll simply put here one index that is called as J and I will put another index that is called as an I. Now what I will do is I will simply check are these two elements are different? No, they are not different. One is equal to one. So simply what I will do is simply I will move the J to the next position that is at this position. Now we can see this, 
this one and this two are completely different so what i will do is i will simply move this pointer j to its next position over here and i will put this two at this position so here we will have two now again i will check i move ahead and i will check is this two and two are different no they are same therefore i will simply ignore this and i will move ahead Again, I can see this two and this two are same. So simply ignore this and move ahead. Now I can see that this four and this two are different. Therefore, it can be used. So what again I will do is I will simply move this J pointer to the next position that is at this position and I will simply put this four at this position. So in place of two, now we have four. So again, we can what we can do is we can simply move this I to the next position that is at the four. And we can see that this four and this four are same. Therefore, this last number four will be ignored. And finally, we have traversed the whole array. Now, if you see clearly that what we have this, the first three elements are our distinct elements. That is one, two, and four. And what I told you that my J is pointing at this position. So what we need to return is we have to return J plus one because J is pointing at index two but there are total three elements. Therefore, we will return two plus one equals to three. So this was the most simplest optimal solution for this problem. Now let's check what will be the code in C++ for the given problem. So here you can see this, they have given an array and the size of array as n. So if my, there are no any elements present in my array, simply I will return zero because there are no elements present in my array. Now, as I told you in the earlier tutorial that I use index J so here in place of j, I will simply using the index which is initially pointing at 0th position and I'm starting from the first position. So what I will do is I'm comparing those two elements that is a of index is not equal to a of i. So simply I will take the index one position ahead and in place of index, I will paste that element. So I'll keep on doing this until I don't go at the last of an array. And finally, I will simply return index plus one. So this was the most easiest and the simplest problems we learned today.